Hello everyone. Um, welcome. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Can someone let me know in the chat uh, if the audio is working, video is working, etc. Thanks. Just gonna wait a couple minutes till we have have a few more people. All right, let's get started. This is lecture 18 of EECS 281. And today, um, the main topic is going to be AVL trees, but we have a little bit, um, one last piece of the binary search tree that we need to go over first before we, before we get into that. Um, before we get into the lecture though, two things I'd like to know. Um, where is it? Ah, yes. Okay, so the midterm scores are released on Gradescope, and I'd recommend, you know, looking at uh, what's happening, or sorry, what, what, what's going, or like um, how, how, your, how your answers were graded. Um, so we're going to allow regrade re requests to be submitted um, starting today and ending in a week. We're not actually going to, um, we're going to collect all the regrade requests over that week. And then uh, after that, are we, only after that are we going to start doing the actual regrades themselves. Um, so regrade requests are only for grading errors, not just because you disagree with the rubric. If you think that we have um, misunderstood how your solution works, or um, if we're missing, you know, if we're missing some piece of information to essentially give you a better grade, um, that's how that's what a regrade request is for. Um, solutions are not posted anywhere, I'm afraid. So there's a question in chat asking if solutions are posted anywhere. Um, but if you want to see, I mean, there's posts on Piazza covering this, but if you want to see the, like how you did um, answer by answer on the multiple choice portion, you have to go to office hours for that. But, but see the Piazza post for more details on all of that. Um, I also see somebody in the chat saying, everybody go vote. Just want to give a little bit more, more volume to that. Please do vote. This is the last chance and it's an important election. So, um, if you want to vote, but you don't know how, there's a bunch of information at this website, covote.umich.edu. Um, and also the UM Museum of Art is doing a project where you can go there. Um, they have a, a clerk's office there. So you can get, get registered to vote and vote all in one trip at the UM Museum of Art if you are a UMich student. Um, yeah, exactly. If, if you're not registered, you can still register. It's not too late. Um, and this is, today is your last chance. I believe the UM Museum of Art um, satellite clerk's office is open until 8 p.m. So, but better to go earlier if possible. 
So with that, um, let's get into the, into the lecture itself. So last time we talked about um, a bunch of stuff, right? We talked about trees, a bunch of tree terminology, right? Root, parent, child, leaf nodes, binary trees. We talked about binary trees a bunch. Um, we talked about how to do a tree traversal, right? Um, Pre-order, post-order, in-order traversals. Um, and then we, we got into binary search trees, which, uh, let's see, if you'll remember, are basically just a binary tree, but they also satisfy this property that says all the, all the nodes in the left subtree um, will be less than the, the current node, and all the nodes in the right subtree will be greater. And we went over some algorithms for, um, let's see, we talked about insert and search in a binary tree. Um, the one thing that we had left to talk about that we didn't get to last time was remove. So how do we re remove a node from a binary search tree? So here, there are four cases that we have to worry about. If we're removing some node Z, um, well, I guess first, you know, first we have to find the node that we want to remove, but we've already seen how to do search. So we're just going to do search to find the node that we want to remove. And then we have these four cases to worry about. So the very first case is, is straightforward. If the node that we want to remove, some node Z, has no children, um, well, then we just delete that node, which would mean setting its parent's pointer to be null. Um, and then we also have these two uh, still pre pretty easy cases where Z has no left child and Z has no right child. And then finally, there's the hardest case, which is where the node that we are removing has two children. So let's, let's get into the easy cases first. Um, so let, here, here we've got our tree. We've got the node we want to remove, and it has a right child. All we're going to do is we're going to remove the node and replace it with R, the right child. Um, so that means updating the parent's pointer to instead of point to C, point to R. So that's you know where as a right child, having a having a left child is essentially the same thing, just with left and right swapped. Um, but then we get to the hard case, where the node that we are removing has both left and right children. So what we need to do here is we need to combine the left subtree and the right subtree into one tree, so that we will have one node at the top of that tree that can replace z. So the idea here, or the, the, the thing to remember, right, is that all, all the keys in the left subtree are going to be less than all the keys in the right subtree. So we need to find some node that could either be the smallest node from the left subtree or the largest node from the right subtree to be the root of this new tree. Um, and here we're going to arbitrarily choose um, the smallest node from the right subtree. We could just as well have chosen the largest node from the left subtree. So we're going to take the smallest node from the right hand subtree and make that as the root of our new tree that we're making. Now, um, this value we're going to call the in order successor. Um, and this is just the minimum value of the right hand subtree. If you remember, in order traversal puts things in order. Um, that's why this is called the in order successor, because the first item in the in order traversal will be the minimum value. So, um, just to see this a little bit more visually, right? Here's here's the setup, right? We have our node v that we want to remove. It has a left subtree and a right subtree. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this node from the right-hand subtree. We're going to replace v 
with that node. And then we're going to delete that node, right? Um, so this is actually not quite the most complex case, because this node here, the in-order successor, um, it can't have a left child, but it could still have a right a right hand subtree of its own. Call that R2. Um, and so when we remove remove um, node zero here, its right hand subtree is just going to get bumped up to sit where it once sat. And that's how it works visually. Let's see how this works in code. So we've got our uh, remove function. We've got our our little trick that we've done for all the for a whole bunch of the tree algorithms where we have a node pointer reference, which allows us to modify the calling functions node pointer. Um, we've got our two local variables here, node to delete, and the in order successor. And we're going to use both of those later on in the code. But the first thing to do in remove is search, right? So we have to check if, or sorry, we have to find this value within the tree. So we have our recursive base case here for search, which is that if we've ended up at a null pointer, there's nothing left to do. We return. Um, otherwise, if the value we're looking for is in the left sub, or sorry, is less than the current node's value, um, we're going to search in the left subtree. Otherwise, if it's greater, we'll search in the right subtree. So that's that's the recursive search. And this else case here then um, covers the case where we have found the value we're looking for. In other words, we are currently at the node um, that has value val. So now we need to do our deletion of the node. So here are the two simple cases we talked about where um, if the tree has no, or sorry, if the current node has no left child, uh, we will replace it with its right child and delete the, the piece of memory that we have now stranded. Um, similarly, for the other simple case where the current node has no right child. We're going to replace the current node with its left child and delete that piece of memory that we've stranded. Now, the final case is the hardest one, and that's all on this next slide. And here, we need to find the in order successor, right? And so, in order to find the in order successor, we're going to initialize it to the current node's right child. But then we've got this while loop. While the in order successor, or sorry, while our current in order successor variable has a left child, we'll update the in order successor to be uh, the left child of what it was. In other words, in order to find the in order successor, we go right once, and then we go left as many times as we can. So now that we have the in order successor, we replace the current node's value with the in order successor's value, and we recursively call remove um, to remove the in order successor from the right subtree. And this remove um, is not going to be a complicated remove because we know that the in order successor only has one child. All right, so that's the last algorithm for binary search trees. Um, and just to sum up on binary search trees, because it has been one lecture since we last saw them, um, each node points to two children and possibly a parent. All nodes are ordered. Um, and we've seen how to insert and remove nodes, uh, both the easy and more complicated cases. And in general, operations on a BST are O of H, where H is the height of the tree, which on average is order log N, but in the worst case can be order N.
So the question is, can we be smarter about how we arrange the tree? Do we have to accept this worst case, or is there something we can do about it? And the answer is, there, there is something we can do about it, and that's called an AVL tree. And the AVL tree, the goal of it is to make sure that the height is not just on average um, O of log n, but actually has a worst case O of log n height. And how this is going to work? Well, first off, it's named for Adelson, Belsky, and Landis. That's how the tree gets kind of this name that you know doesn't doesn't really tell you anything about the tree. It's just named for its creators. Um, before we get into how it works, hmm, apologies. Um, before we get into how it works, I should mention there's also another type of tree called a red-black tree that is pretty similar to an ADL tree um, in that it is a balanced binary search tree. A red-black tree is what the STL uses for math. Um, a bunch of you are probably familiar with that from uh, having started Project 3 by now. Um, but we're going to cover ABL trees instead of red black trees. The, the you know the benefit of both is is more or less the same. However, the ABL tree is um, less complex to explain. So you know it's going to take fewer slides to explain it. Um, and there's also some trade-offs in performance between an ABL tree and a red black tree. So an ABL tree is a bit more strictly balanced than the red black tree. So if you only need to do um, searches, an ABL tree is probably going to be a little bit faster. However, the ABL tree has basically does more work on every um, insertion or removal because it is trying to be more strictly balanced. So if you have you know, not just searches, but also inserts and removes, a red black tree is probably a slightly better choice. So that's why we're covering the ABL tree instead of the red black tree. Anyhow, so an ABL tree is a binary search tree, and we're going to add to it this extra property called the height balance property, which is for every internal node, the heights of the children differ by at most one. And we're going to use, so that's the property we want to maintain. Obviously, when you insert something or remove something from the tree, this property might be violated. So we're going to use um, something called rotations to correct imbalance, and we'll see what those are in a few slides. But first, let's look at some trees. Are these ABL trees? So tree zero, the empty tree, sure, that, that satisfies the property. For tree one, yep, that's, that's balanced. Tree two, here, we have a little bit of imbalance, right? So the, the node 5 has a left child of height 1 and a right child of height 0. Um, but that's only a difference of 1, right? We, we allow the heights of the children to differ by 1. Uh, so this is still balanced. Now, tree 3 here um, has a left child with a height of 2 and a right child with a height of 0. So that's not balanced. So this is not an ADL tree. Uh, however, if we add in this, this node here, now this is balanced, right? Because the left child has a height of 2 and the right child has a height of 1. Similarly, tree 5, also balanced. Now tree 6 here, if we just look at 5, is 5 balanced? Well, it has a height of 2 on the left subtree and it has a height of 3 on the right subtree. So, so, so we might think it's balanced if, balanced if we only looked at the root node. However, if we look at node 7, we see that node 7's left child has a height of 0, and node 7's right child has a height of 2. So this is not balanced, because it's imbalanced at, at node 7. So now the question is, given... 
um, given if if we have an ABL tree, what is the height of an ABL tree with n nodes in it? What bounds can we place on the height? Oh, I have a question in chat. Can you please explain tree six again? Right. So tree six. Um, so we have to make sure that the balance property holds at every single node. So oh, that's not supposed to write. Sorry about that. Just trying to get my, uh, my laser pointer back. Great. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh no. We're stuck in a loop here. Okay, there's my laser point. Okay, so node three is balanced. We've seen that example before. Node two is balanced. We've seen that example before. Um, node eight is balanced. Node nine is balanced. Node seven has a left child, which is empty. So that means its left child has height zero. And its right child, well, there's two nodes there. That's height two. So it's imbalanced at node seven. However, and kind of the weird thing about this tree is that node 5, which is above 7, still ends up being balanced because um, its left child has a height of 2 and its right child has a height of 3. So when we're talking about an ABL tree, we do need to make sure that every node is balanced, not just the root. Hopefully that made things a little clearer. Um, so. Let's move on to, to talking about the number of nodes in an ABL tree. So for any binary tree, the maximum number of nodes that you can have is, is, um, you know, by, is bounded by essentially the, the complete tree, right? Where you have all of the nodes at every level, right? So in this case, the, um, the number of nodes is going to be less than um, I should have. Um, it's going to be less than um, two to the h plus one, where h is the height of the tree. So in this case, the height is two. Right, we have two layers of of nodes. So two to the h plus one is two to the three, which is eight, and there's only seven nodes in the tree. So we know for any tree, regardless of whether it's an ABL tree or not, that um, we can bound the number of nodes from above by this property, uh, which is equivalent to saying that the height is at least O of log n, which isn't really quite what we're interested in. We want to say that height is less than O of log n. I mean, we'd, we'd like to be able to say that for an arbitrary tree. It's not true for an arbitrary tree, but we'll see why it's true for an AVL tree. Um, and since this isn't really a proof-focused class, we're not going to go into detail on the proof this is going to be a high level hand wavy overview of the proof. I think I think 203 or x203 is your source for for proofs. Um, and, and, and we don't do that here. Uh, not quite as much, at least. So in our proof, we won't, we're concerned with the height of the tree and also the minimum number of nodes in an APL tree of height h. And this is going to be sort of an inductive proof. So we've got our base cases, right? The number of nodes in an empty tree is zero. The number of nodes in the tree of height one is one. Now the question is, what happens in a taller tree? How can we say something about the minimum number of nodes in an ABL tree of height h? 
Well, we can we can break it down, right? So we can say that any tree, ABL tree, consists of the root node and two ABL subtrees. And here we're interested in the minimum number of nodes. So rather than saying, you know, these ABL subtrees could be both height h minus one, or even one height h minus one and one height h, we're going to say that one is height h minus one and the other is height h minus 2. And this lets us write out this little recurrence relation here. n of h equals 1 plus n of h minus 1 plus n of h minus 2. Um, and now all that we need to do, given this recurrence relation, is just um, put some bound, use this recurrence relationship, put some bounds on n of h, so that we can say that um, yeah, the number of trees is, is or sorry, the number, sorry, that the height, our, our eventual goal is to show that the height of the tree is bounded by log n. So we're going to try to, we're going to rewrite this expression. So we know that n of h minus 1 is greater than n of h minus 2. So this lets us say that um, this whole expression is greater than this expression if we replace n of h minus 1 with n of h minus 2. That's a minus. Now we can collect our terms, so we can you know, cross this off and put a 2 there. We can say that this expression is greater than 2 times n of h minus 2. Because um, we're, just, we're just tossing away this pesky 1 here. So now we have n of h is greater than 2 times n of h minus 2. So what can we do with this? Well. This lets us say that n of h is greater than um, 2 times 2 times n of h minus 4, right? We're just, use, we're just substituting in this inequality in for itself. And we can generalize this too. So we can say that n of h is greater than 2 to the i. Uh, oh, we're getting a little cramp cramped here. It, and it's already written out over here. This, if we generalize it, it, lets us say that n of h is greater than 2 to the i times n of h minus 2i. Or really what we're saying here is that the whole thing grows by 2 to the n. If we just substitute in for i, or if we just substitute h in for i, then we get n of h is greater than 2 to the h over 2 minus 1. Um, and this is essentially what we want to show, but we still need to take um, some logarithms and rearrange. So I can actually write out those steps. So we can say that log n is, uh, is greater than log 2 to the h over 2 minus 1, which is also equal to h over 2 minus 1, right? Because if we're taking the logarithm of 2 to the something, it's just that something, right? And so if we rewrite this, we can see that h, or sorry, log, we can see that log n uh, plus 1 times 2 is greater than h, or alternately that h is less than 2 times log n plus 2, which means that h is, um, 
I will log in. Which is our goal, right? To show that in the worst case, the height of the tree is log n. Because this means that every operation we do on the tree, you know, insert, remove, is going to also be order log n. And this is important because we have not seen any data structure so far um, that has better than O of n, worst case search, right? So the hash maps we saw a lecture or two ago, those are all worst case O of n. Similarly, doing lookup in a in a um, in a linked list or unsorted vector is O of n. The only place we've seen O of log n search before is binary search on a sorted vector. But a sorted vector, while it has log n search, it doesn't let you add new elements to it in log n time. To add a new element to a sorted vector takes linear time. So that, that's really what's unique about a uh, balanced binary search tree is that it lets you perform all these operations in logarithmic time. So speaking of the operations, how do we do them in an AVL tree? And some of them are going to be the same. All right, searching and sorting are going to be the same as a binary search tree because you know un underneath it all, this is a binary search tree. Uh, the tricky part, though, is going to be um, insert and remove. And the reason is that these operations either add a node or remove a node, which could potentially violate the AVL property of our tree. And so in both cases, we're going to need to do some amount of extra work in order to make sure that the AVL property holds at the end of the operation. So how is insert into an AVL tree going to work? Well, step one, we're going to do insert just like our binary search tree. And step two, we're going to fix the AVL property, right? Because it might have been broken with this insert. So we're going to rearrange the tree to make it balanced again. And the idea is that at each node, we're going to compute something called the balance factor which is just the height of the left child minus the height of the right child. So a node that, is, it, that satisfies the ADVL property, a node that is balanced, is going to have a balance factor of zero, which is where both its children have the same height, um, a balance factor of plus one, where the left subtree is taller, or a balance factor of minus one, where the right tree is taller. So any anytime you have a balance factor of, say, minus 2 or plus 2, that node is out of balance. So let's do an example where we compute the heights and the balance factors. So we can walk through and for each node compute its height, like so. And then on the left-hand side, we can write the balance factor. So node 3 has no children, so, well, both, ch both children have a height of 0. Um, node 2 has no left child, so height 0 over here and height 1 over here for a balance factor of minus 1. Node 7, no children, balance factor 0. And node 5 has left child with height 2, right child with height 1. So it's a balance factor of plus one. Um, and we can do a similar thing for this tree over here, where we write in the heights of each node, as well as their balance factors. And here we see node two has a balance factor of minus two. That's, that means it does not satisfy the AVL property. And so the, this tree here is not an AVL tree. One thing to note about balance factors, and here we're drawing the balance factor instead of the node's value inside of the node, um, is there's kind of multiple ways to have you know, your tree out of balance. And the signs do matter, right? So we're going to see later on why this is important, um, but it's important to note that you can have this sort of 
straightforward tree where you know we have balance factor zero minus one minus two. Um, but we could also have oh dear have the case where we have balance factor zero, balance factor plus one, and balance factor minus two. In other words, the 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 signs are flipping around. Um, okay, so we've got another exercise for about for writing out calculating balance factors. Um, but I'd like to turn this into a uh, example or a, an exercise for everyone following along. So pick a node and compute its balance factor and put the answer in chat. And we'll see if we can get all of the nodes here labeled. And if you aren't at a keyboard, still try to think of a, you know, do it in your head. Pick a node, compute its balance factor. Let's see some, let's see some answers in the chat. Okay, someone asks, do all leaf nodes have a balance factor of zero? And that is correct. So I'll just write in zero for all the leaf nodes. Next up, uh, we have someone saying that node 6 has balance factor 0. That's correct. Balance factor of 20 is 0. That's correct. 15 is minus 1. That is also correct. 7 is minus 1. Correct. 18 is 0. Correct. Oh, yeah, I got <laughs> the chat's correcting me. It is actually a plus one for 15. And node three, balance factor zero. So yeah, it's all zeros except for at 15 and at seven. All right. So well done, everyone. You can calculate balance factors, which is the most important part, maybe, of, <laughs> of an ABL tree. Um, but let's say now we do an insert into our tree, right? So this tree is balanced. Everything here has a balance factor of 0, minus 1, or plus 1. But now that we do an insert, we're adding this extra node down here at 14. Um, and that's going to make this unbalanced. If we look at 7, its balance factor was minus 1, but now it's minus 2. Um, let's see, 6 was 0, now it's minus 1. And 15 was plus 1, but now it's plus 2. A couple questions in the chat. Well, first is, so it's OK for one side to have several more elements than the other, as long as they all have similar heights. That's true. Um, you'll notice, though, that it's impossible for them to have, like, while, while it's possible for them to have a different number of, of elements, one can't have, like, one side can't have all the elements because then the other one. Uh, the other side would have no nodes left, and it would have height zero, and so it would be unbalanced. So it is still maintaining some limit on the number of nodes in the left tree versus the right tree. Um, and another question, how can, can I explain how 6 is 0? Right, so for 6, if we compute the heights, right, all our leaf nodes have height 1, the ones above them have height 2, and so for 6, its left child has height 2, and its right child has height 2. So 2 minus 2 makes 0 for the balance factor of 6. All right, so for our, our tree with the insertion, we have a problem, right? It doesn't satisfy the ABL property. How can we rearrange this tree um, in order to get it to satisfy the property? And I'll just give you a sneak peek at the answer. What we do is we rearrange these nodes. So 13 is going to end up, um, well, this little subtree is going to end up as 13, 7, 
14. And that's going to bring everything back into balance. Um, but that's skipping to the end. Let, let, let's start at the beginning. So we're going to use something called rotations. And a rotation involves making one of the children a parent and making that parent a child. So in this example here, we're making three, which is a child of two. After we do the rotation, three becomes the parent and two becomes the child. And what's important to note here is that the BST property still holds. If you look at the nodes left to right, or sorry, if you do an in-order traversal of the nodes, everything is still in sorted order. The other cool thing about rotation is that it is a local change. We involving you know three pointers, two nodes. It's not important the actual actual details, but the the important part is that it's um, a constant number, right? So this is a constant time operation, and so that means that it's going to be well very useful. We can use it in a logarithmic time operation without increasing the yeah you know, the time complexity. So if we have to do a rotation or two in as part of our insertion, it's not going to make insertion uh, slower in terms of its asymptotic time complexity. So rotations in a little more detail. We're going to make the child a parent and the parent a child. And we're going to preserve the ordering among the keys in the nodes. The problem, or the, the tricky part, is how do you handle the case where the child that is going to become a parent already has a child where the parent would go? And what you do there is that child becomes the child of the old parent. So the, you know, if, you, if it's a, well, actually, we haven't defined right or left rotations yet, but um, in either case, the, the kind of stranded child will get, the, the child of the child will get attached to the parent, the old parent. So here, I think, is probably the clearest example of what a rotation is. So this is a, um, a rotate right operation versus a rotate left operation. So he, we're, we're starting out with this tree up here, and we're ending up here. So you can see we're taking the left child and making it the parent. And the parent ends up as the right child of the old left child. Now, for some of the subtrees, it's pretty clear what happens, right? The left subtree of the left child stays as the left child, or sorry, as the left subtree of the left child. And the right subtree of parent stays as the right subtree of parent. However, this pink subtree, uh, before we do the rotation, is the right subtree of left child. But after the rotation, you'll notice it's no longer attached to the left child. It's now the left subtree of a parent. So we've kind of ha we've handed off this subtree from left child to parent. Now the important thing to note is the the binary search tree property, right? The fact that this subtree is the left child of parent and the right child of LC means that all the values in this subtree lie somewhere between LC and P's values. So it's equivalent to have it be the right child of LC and the left child of P, because that says the same thing about the values in this subtree. All it says is that the values in this subtree are somewhere between the values of this node and that node. So that is a right rotation, where the parent ends up as the right child. A left rotation is the same thing, just mirror image, uh, where the parent becomes the left child. And we'll see how we can use this to balance a tree, right? So we've got two trees here. What sort of rotations do we need to do to balance each of them? Well. For this example on the left, 
I'll just write in the balance factors first before we do that. We can see that it has a balance factor of minus 2 at the root, so it's unbalanced. So we, can, we want to do a rotation. Um, and what we want to do in this case is we want to do a left ro rotation. In other words, we want A to end up as the child of B. We want A to become the left child of B. And that's exactly what a left rotation ends up doing. It makes the right child, which is B, the parent, and puts the old parent as the left child. And B hangs on to its right subtree. So that is now a balanced tree with a balance factor of zero everywhere. Now this tree is a little bit more uh, complicated. But right in the balance factors, you'll see that the that they're both imbalanced at a, right? They both have minus two at a, but where they differ is at C, or the node right below them, the root, the, or the node right below the node that is imbalanced, where this one has a plus one and this one has a minus one. So here the signs agree. Here, the signs are different. And what that means is that <clears throat> this case is a little bit more complicated. But before we go into how to actually solve it, what if we just apply the same operation we did for this tree? Right, so let's just do a left rotation on this tree. What happens? Well, C becomes the parent. A becomes its left child. Now B was the left child of C. And if you remember the previous slide, that means it now gets passed around. It now gets shifted from being connected to C to being connected to A. So this is what we get after doing a left rotation on this tree. And you'll notice that it's not balanced. Our left rotation didn't fix anything. Now, if we had done a right rotation, it also would not have fixed anything. So what do we do for this case? And the answer is that we actually need to do two rotations in order to fix this tree, because it's just that out of whack. So we're going to actually do a right rotation on C and then a left rotation on A. So the result of doing that, I don't know, color changed. So um, we're going to do a right rotation. Oh no. There we go. Got the highlighter back. So we're going to do a right rotation on C, which means that C is going to become the left child of B. Um, and since A is the parent of the, situ of the spot where the rotation is taking place, it just stays the parent. So we've got A up top, B as its child, and C as its child. So by doing a right rotation here, we've turned this tree into what this one started out as. So now we just need to do a left rotation on this, and we end up with a nice balanced tree, like we wanted. Um, OK, so this is just, <laughs> just what I've already drawn out. Right? So to go from this case just takes one rotation, but this case takes rotate right, and then a rotate left. So when we're doing an insert, there are going to be four possible cases for the insert for the rotations we're going to need to do to balance the tree. Um, and you can probably guess what they are, but they are a left rotation, a right rotation, a double rotation, which is a right rotate followed by a left rotate, and a double rotate, which is a left rotate followed by a right rotate. And these are some of the figures from, from CLRS, our textbook, um, just showing what this looks like. So here, the nice thing is that the subtrees are drawn to height. So we can see that 
um, you know, the overall height of this subtree is more than the height of this subtree. So we can write in some balance factors here, minus one, or sorry, uh, plus one, minus one, minus two. So we can see that we have a minus two here with same sign below it, right? Minus two, minus one. So that means that we're going to need to do a single left rotate at A. And when we do that, B becomes the parent and A becomes the left child. And you can see that over here. Similarly, down here, um, except all the signs are flipped, everything's just a mirror image of the top. So here again, we have plus two and plus one. The signs agree, so it's a single rotation. Um, and B is going to become the parent, and C is going to become its right child because it's right rotation. Now, when do we need a double rotation? Well, in this case, where we have balance factors that look like this, where we have minus two here, so that's unbalanced, but we have plus one here. The signs disagree. So refer, that means that we're first going to do a right rotation at the child of the unbalanced node. And what that's going to do, if we do a right rotation here, is it's going to make B the parent and C the right child. So you can see that over here. And then now we have, um, now all we need to do is just one left rotation at A, and our tree becomes balanced. So that's case one for double rotations, and the other case is just the mirror image, where you know the signs are backwards, and we start off with a left rotation and then do a right rotation. Um, this is just kind of another drawing with different graphics from from a different source. Again, the subtrees are drawn to height. So you can see, um, you know, we can draw in some balance factors here, right? Minus one, minus two. So this case is an unbalanced tree, and the signs agree. So all we need to do is a single rotation around five. So we're gonna do a right rotate around five to get to this final tree. Similarly here, it's unbalanced and the signs agree. So we just do a left rotation around three to get here. And then these are the two double rotation cases where there's a zigzag. The signs disagree at 3 and 5, so we're going to do a left rotation at 3, which is going to bring us here, and then a right rotation at 5, which is going to bring us here to a balanced tree. All right, so that is rotations, and that's how you can use rotations to balance a tree. How do we use this within our insert function? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We're going to do our insert, and then you know, our insert is a recursive function. So after every recursive function call returns, we're just going to run this code, which is called check and balance. And as you might expect, it checks if the node is out of balance, and if it's out of balance, it balances it with rotations. So if the current node has a balance factor that is too large or too small, um, we're going to rotate right or left, respectively. And then inside each branch, we also have this check here and this check here that just check if the child that we are rotating um, away from uh, has a different sign than the current node's sign. And in th that case, we're going to do two rotations. We're going to rotate the child and then we're going to rotate at the current node. And similarly for the other case where we're doing a, overall we're doing a left rotation, we're going to first do this right rotation on the child if the child's balance factor has the opposite sign from our node's sign. So what is the complexity of this? Well, this function itself, this is constant time. Rotations are constant time, and it's a fixed number of rotations at most two rotations. 
So that sounds good, but how many times do we need to call check and balance? Or how, how many times do we need to do these sorts of fixes after an insertion? And the answer, fortunately, is that um, we only have to do one fix for insertion. Um, the only balance factors in the tree that will be affected are all the ancestors of the node that was uh, inserted. And so as we're walking up and doing check and balance, we're going to find that fixing the first balance factor that we come to that is minus 2 or plus 2 is actually going to end up fixing all the ones above it as well. And the reason this is is because um, insert adds a node. And that means that it makes some subtrees too tall. When we do the rotation, or when we do the check and balance here, these rotations make the current subtree one shorter. And so when you do that one fix, everything else in the tree above that, the subtree that we have fixed, um, is now going to see this subtree as having the old height that it had before insertion, and so it's not going to have thrown anything else out of whack. So let's see. Let's do an exercise of how to insert keys into an ABL tree. So we're going to insert these keys into an ABL tree, and we're going to rebalance as necessary. So let's draw it out. So the first key we need to insert is 3. That becomes the root. Then we insert 2. Becomes the left child, because this is a binary search tree, and 2 is less than 3. Then we insert 1. And now you'll notice our balance factors show that uh, we are unbalanced at the root node. And it's positive. So that means we're going to do a right rotate. So 3 becomes the right child of 2. And 2 keeps its left subtree, which is 1. So we end up at this tree. And yeah, we can see that I did, did my work right on that slide. Um, so now we need to insert. These are, these are the remaining keys that we need to insert. So 4, 5, 6, 7. So we've got the tree. I'll just draw it out again. Let's insert 4. Um, everything is still balanced here. Now we're going to insert 5. And here we see that we have an imbalance. The signs agree, so it's just a single rotate, and it's negative, so that means a left rotate. So we are going to um, well, we're going to do a rotation, a left rotation, and we're going to end up with um, four here, three here and five here. And now we are balanced again. And as you can see on the next slide, yeah, that, that's what the tree looks like. So now we need to insert 6, 7, 16, 15, and 14 into this tree. So I'll just draw that again. 2, 1, 4, 3, 5. Now we insert 6. And if we compute our balance factors, we see that we are out of balance at the root of the tree. So we're going to do a left rotate on the root. Um, and I'll just draw the, the rebounced tree over here. So as we're doing a left rotate, 2 becomes the left child. And 4 becomes the new root. And we're going to Keep the 2 keeps its left subtree, 4 keeps its right subtree. And the left subtree of 4 
um, gets passed off, it ha gets handed off to two. So this was the left subtree of four, but now it becomes the right subtree of two. And now, once again, we have a balanced ABL tree, um, which looks right. And so now we need to insert 7, 16, 15, 14. So there's our tree. Now we insert 7. And we see that we are unbalanced. Um, so we have a minus 1 and a minus 2 here. So I'm just going to. Well, I guess I'll redraw it. You now end up with 4 at the root, 2, 1, 3. And we're rotating this subtree around 5. We're rotating left, so 5 becomes the left child and 6 becomes the parent. And seven uh, just hangs on to six. All right, so now we've got a balanced tree. And um, now we need to insert 16, 15, and 14. So 16, 15, and 14, we need to insert 16. It goes here. Uh, everything is still balanced. Now we insert 15. And we can see that things are out of balance. We have a plus 1 here and a minus 2 here. So the signs disagree, which means we need to do a double rotate. So we're going to do a first rotate around 16. Uh, so 16 is going to become the, the child, and 15 is going to be the parent. Um, and then we're going to do a left rotate around 7. So 7 is going to become the, the left child. And then this subtree is just attached here, so I can draw out the rest of the tree, like so. And I'm not going to bother drawing out the left subtree, but you can see what it looks like here. Now, the last thing to do is to insert 14. So we're inserting it in, we see it's greater than 4, greater than 6, less than 15, greater than 7. So we can actually just insert it right like that as the right child of 7. Are we balanced? Well, there's a balance factor of minus 1 plus one, here we have a height of one, here we have a height of two, that's a minus one, um, and here for four we have a height of two on the left subtree and a height of four on the right subtree, so that's a minus two, which means we need to do a uh, rotate left at four, and it's just a single rotate because the signs agree. So 4 is going to be the left child, and 6 becomes the new parent. Ah, OK, I have the chat correcting me. Yes, you are all correct and paying attention. Well done. Um, <laughs> I miscounted. This is minus two here. Thanks for correcting me. Um, so we need to do a left rotate at six, not at four. So we're gonna do a left rotate at six. That means six becomes the left child and 15 becomes the parent. 
and 15 is going to hang on to its right subtree. And 6 is going to hang on to its left subtree. And then the left subtree of 15 is going to become the right subtree of 6. And then, of course, the rest of the tree stays the same. So we have 4 up at the root, and it has you know, 2, 1, 3 over here. Now I'm starting to wonder if I've made another mistake. All right, let's, let's calculate the balance factors, right? Oh, exactly. The chat is correcting me again, right? You can see we didn't end up balanced, and that's because I made a mistake. I did a single rotate around 6. But you'll see that the, the signs here don't agree. We should, have, we should have done a double rotate. So time to start over, and let, let's do that double rotate. So, right, we have a, a minus sign here, and we have a positive sign here. So we first have to do a right rotate here, followed by a left rotate here. So the left rotate at 15, sorry, the right rotate at 15 is going to make 7, the parent, and 15, the child. And 15 is going to hang on to its right subtree. And 7. Uh, it's going to hang on to its left subtree, and its right subtree is just going to get shuffled off, uh, passed along to 15. So now, you know, we've got, we've got a 6 and 5 up here. Now we need to do the left rotate at 6. That's going to make um, the child, 7, the new parent. That's going to make 6, um, the child. So 6 is going to be over here. And it's going to, 6 is going to hang on to its left subtree, which is just 5. And now we've sorted our, our issue out, and I'll draw in the rest of the subtree. Or sorry, the rest of the tree. So four is still the root. And over here we have two, one, and three. So apologies for the mistakes, but hopefully those mistakes were educational. We saw that if we don't choose the rotations we're doing carefully, we don't end up with a balanced tree. Um, but if you do cho choose the rotations right, you do, you do just need two rotations in order to get the tree to be balanced. Um, and we can check my work over here and see that, yes, in the end, the tree we have is correct. So that is it for insert into an APL tree. Next up is remove. And this is actually, I think, going to be the last, last piece of this lecture, which is good, uh, as far as time goes. Um, this the idea with the AVL tree remove is there's going to be two steps again. We're going to do a, a remove, just like a binary search tree. And then we're going to rearrange the tree using rotations again uh, to balance the height. And so... The okay, actually, all, all these observations here are really just for the the binary search tree part of it. So we're going to do the remove just like a binary search tree, um, and it's really the the rearranging the tree that's going to be different. The the, the rotations of the tree that's going to be different. So here is an ABL tree that is balanced, and now we're going to remove thirty two from the from the tree. You can see that after, afterwards, we have become unbalanced. So 
what do we need to do? Well, we have we are going to calculate our ba our balance factors as we travel up the tree from the removed node to the root. So 17 has a balance factor of 0, but the root 44 has a balance factor of minus 2. So that means we need to, to do a single rotate left um, at the root. So when we do that, 62 becomes the new root, as you can see, and 44 becomes the left child, and 62 hangs on to its right subtree, 44 hangs on to its left subtree, and this subtree in the middle, you can see, gets shuffled from being connected to 62 uh, to being connected to 44. Now, how many fixes are needed after a remove? Right, because insert only needed one fix. Um, remove, unfortunately, could need uh, multiple fixes. And this is because um, when we remove, we are making a subtree one shorter. And when we do a rotate, we are um, potentially making uh, a subtree shorter as well. So one fix isn't necessarily going to ca cancel out uh, the removal. It might not be enough. But the most that we're going to need to do, and I'm not even sure it would be possible, but we can upper bound it by this number, right? Is we could imagine what if we had to do a fix at every node along the path from uh, along the path all the way up to the root. In that case, we would need to do um, you know O of H removals where O of H where H is the height of the tree. But since we know that the height of the tree is log n, that's just order log n fixes um, in the worst case. So um, oh yeah, and I see the answer in the chat as well. Correct. So let's see a slightly more complicated case of doing a, a remove. Um, so let's say we want to remove the root. Well, so the first part works just like the binary search tree remove, where we find the in-order successor by going right and then left as many times as we can. So that's 78. And we copy 78's data to the root, and then we remove uh, 78 from the tree entirely. And now that we've done this, we can see that our balance factors, uh, well, they're unbalanced. Or, sorry, that's a plus. So we need to do a single right rotate at the root in order to bring this into balance. However, and this is where it gets a little more uh, tricky compared to the insertion case. Um, well, since we're doing a right rotate, the, the child that we need to check to see if the signs agree is actually the left child, not the child that we kind of just interacted with, right? So we need to know the balance factor of this node. Um, which here is minus 1. So we can see that we're, the signs don't agree, we're going to have to do a double rotate. So we're first going to have to do a left rotate um, at 44, and then a right rotate at 78. And let's see what that looks like. So if we do the, the single rotate, oh, sorry, the, the left rotate at 44, 50, that makes 50 the, the parent of this subtree with 44 as its left child. Um, and the important thing to notice is that we finish the double rotation before there's any other balance checking or anything like that. So we've done the first rotate, but we still have to do the second rotate. And so we do the second rotate at 78. And we get this very nice complete binary tree over here. And oh, I guess we already mentioned this, but basically, when you do a re remove, you might need multiple fixes. 
um, just because you're shortening a subtree that is already too short. Um, and that actually brings us almost to the end of the, end of the lecture, and at the very least to the end of the slides. Um, so our binary search tree, um, we've seen has worst case insert and search of O of n, but our ADL tree has worst case insert search um, of O of log n, and we should add remove in to both of these cases as well. So um, essentially for all the, all the different operations, our ADL tree has a worst case that is equal to the average case of the normal binary search tree. Um, and then also the other thing to know is that a rotation is constant time whether that's for a single rotate or a double rotate. Now, all of this involves a whole bunch of images and one useful website that you can look at for tree operations is uh, this one here. And since we're at the end of the slides, let's go take a look at this, at this website. Let me see here. Okay. So here we have a binary search tree. And we have these operations at the bottom left that we can do on the binary search tree. So let's do insert um, a value of, let's say, 100. So it walks down the tree, and it puts 100 in the tree. You'll notice uh, this is just a normal binary search tree, right? Not an AVL tree. So it doesn't do any sort of rebalancing after the insert. And in fact, we have quite an unbalanced tree here. So let's look at an AVL tree. And let's do some inserts into this AVL tree. And you can actually put multiple nodes in at once if you separate them with a comma on this website. I would encourage all of you to go to this website and try this out yourself. You can see it walks down the tree, insert 75, and it walks back up, checking balance factors. Now we walk back down, inserting 77, walking up, checking balance factors. 71 is unbalanced. We do a rotation, and we're good. Now, let's see. Let's try doing a, rem a remove. Um, what would be a good note to remove? Let's, let's just see 50. Let's remove 50. So we search for 50. We find its successor. We replace 50 with its successor. And everything is good. Now let's try removing 23, because that will definitely make the tree unbalanced. And we'll see, it, see how a fix works when we do a remove. We walk down the tree, we find 23, and remove it. Now we see that 71 is unbalanced, so we have to rotate. But the rest of the tree is still balanced. Um, and I think that's going to be it for this lecture. I would encourage all of you to go to this website, try playing around with it. Um, the link is here, visual, visualgo.net slash bn slash bst. Um, and it's also, yeah, so this is like a useful resource for, for learning about binary search trees and APL trees. Um, and if you, it's helpful because it's so visual. When you're writing out the algorithms for, you know, doing rotations and stuff, it can be hard to remember what exactly to do. But if you have a, a picture in your mind, that can really help uh, with remembering what needs to be done. Um, and with that, have a good day, everyone. Uh, don't forget to vote. And I'll see you on Thursday to talk about graphs.